These adobe ruins near the Texas-Mexican border belong to some people who didn't learn the law of the desert. Back in the early 1900s, Americans settled here in this once green delta of the Rio Grande to raise food for the quicksilver miners in Terlingua. They tried to coax too much produce from the thin soil and they asked it to support too many cows and the colony failed and now the desert has reclaimed it. Desert people always seem to end up among the dead. Their deeds is fabled and their art is antique as the most ancient of ancestors. Rarely do we think of them among the living, even when there is some semblance of life among the remnant progeny. And yet we usually remember their turn in the sun as brilliant, a brilliance saddened by sand and the patina of time. Perhaps we give them such due because of the odds they faced. A land with little water is a brutal land. Its sun will shrink the fullest grape to raisin and sear the soul to silence. Still, from the time of the pharaohs, men have been drawn to the desert, either to lose themselves from other men or to find themselves from other men. Stingy as it is, the desert of the American Southwest is not alien to life. The plants and animals, and even a few people, have learned to live upon it. and found it to their liking because they were Stoics. They learned to move slowly in the heat, to eat sparingly, and expect little water. They spread themselves as thin as desert flowers, and like the coyote, subsisted on patience and prickly pear. Lushness was not in their conversation. It was not in their dress or in their architecture. The only time they dared dream of it was when they ached for an afterlife. There is a lesson here in the desert. The earth has been good to man, perhaps too good. We have gorged ourselves at its bountiful table, out of proportion to our needs and its capacity. The intemperate desert, as we call it, is arguing temperance and telling us to tone down our greedy mouths and guts, to practice moderation and selectivity, lest we go the way of all species which have smothered themselves in the corpulence of excess.
The balance of nature in the Big Bend is one of low density for all living things. Water gives out before anything else does, long before there is simply no more room, and life must arrange itself accordingly. There is no continuous carpet of grass or herbage, no crowding together of exuberantly growing plant life, as Joseph Wood Crutch once put it. Once a plant or an animal establishes claim to its spot of earth, nothing else intrudes because there is not enough water to support an encroacher. Thus it is that the plants of the desert floor are well spaced, as if a gardener has weeded out the unwanted. Well, that is the case, the gardener being nature itself. The land lies dozing in the sun and seems to repeat with tireless satisfaction two themes. On the flats, cactus, mesquite, Palo Verde, and sand, and on the slopes, agave, ocotillo, and yucca. No one argues that this is Eden, except perhaps the things that have known nothing else. It is admittedly an excessive sun and a paucity of water. But perhaps nature intended it this way, in reaction against the ideal which we have raped. But even the desert has its contradictions. Just when we think its flat floor will run to infinity, we look up to behold a mountain. Here, high in the Chisos, in the Sierras del Carmen, one finds breathtaking scenery and solitude, the soul's substance, but little else to support human habitation. Men must always go up to the mountains to search their hearts, but they must come down again to feed their bodies.
there's something elemental about the desert and its mountains. It's as if we've gone back in time to the beginning, when the surface of our planet was either ocean or desert and mountain. The thorny plants, the scorpions and lizards and spiders, they all hark back to ancient ways of life, to the first vanguard that crawled upon the face of the earth. We still find the lichen, that first colonizer, clinging to the highest, barest rock in the desert. So we are back to the beginning, to the warming sun and the pulling moon, to the brown rivers that run down the red mountains and back to the sea, back to the womb of us all.